Hello everyone and welcome. In the last tutorial, I showed how to use the Oberth effect to more efficiently deal with long ejection burns out of low orbit around Kerbin. And we use that knowledge to send the Jewel 1 here on its way to Jewel. Well, we are now closing in on our giant gas planet and then I realized I have yet to make a video on how to effectively use the science lab that is a key feature of this vessel. The game provides actually very little information in game on how to use this thing well. So I thought before I get into all of the arrow breaking and gravity assisting fun of navigating around the Joule system, why don't I present a short video on how to use the science lab effectively. So we are now in Joule's SOI. And can we see Joule there? I, yeah, just barely. <laughs> Even though we're in the SOI, Joule's gravitational field is pretty huge, so we're still a long way away. But why don't we take this opportunity to take a look at the science lab and how we use it. So we're going to start off here with just doing a single experiment. We'll do a crew report. So I'm going to right click here on the HAB module. The science lab, by the way, doesn't have a crew report. So we'll do the HAB module right beside it here. We're going to right click on that and we're just going to select a crew report. And there's a lot of stuff that you see here that you're probably very, very used to. We have the reset the experiment, just if we want to get rid of it for some reason, we can. We have the keep the experiment, which does what it normally does. We can keep it on board the ship. This could be our 30 science that we're going to have there. And then we have transmit this experiment where we can transmit that 30 science back to research and development. But we have a new button here that says process in the lab where we take 38 data and I'll explain where that number comes from in just a second but the key to notice is is that 38 data is equal to 190 science not 30 science which is what this experiment is normally worth but 190 science so we're getting a significant science boost here now the other thing to notice is that it's going to take 92 days for us to transmit this science, so that boost comes at a time cost. But it is a significant, I mean, it's more than five times what we would normally get. Now let's talk a little bit about where these numbers are coming from and how we are getting that boost so that we can affect how much of a science boost we're going to get. So why 38 instead of 30? Well, that's because we are in Joule's SOI. If you process the science that you collect in the same sphere of influence as where that science was collected, then you get a 25% bonus on that science. So that's where the 38 is coming from. It's the 30 plus a 25% bonus. So this is there to encourage you to bring the lab in situ into the situation in which the science is being collected. There's actually a further bonus that you can get if you get it down to the surface of another body other than Kerbin, you get a further 10% bonus for any of the science that you collect in the sphere of influence of that body. By the way, I mentioned except Kerbin, if you have the science lab on the surface of Kerbin, you get a 90% penalty. <laughs> Don't use this on the surface of Kerbin. They want you to take the lab and bring it out into other situations. Now what's kind of ironic about all of this is actually you can get the boost on surface science on Kerbin if you take that surface science and bring it into orbit around Kerbin, so say you have a science lab there, you can actually collect surface science on the surface of Kerbin, bring it into orbit about Kerbin and you'll get the 25% bonus. Now after you get the 25% bonus, whatever data you have there, that times five is the amount that you get. But it gets even better than that because if I wanted to, I could go ahead and transmit this science. Why don't I hit this transmit and that's going to send the 30 science off to research and development. Okay, there it goes. And some of you are sort of, what are you doing? You just threw away that potential 190 science. 
Uh, no, I didn't, because if I wanted to, I can go ahead, do that crew report again, notice that I don't have the 30 science there anymore, or the science that I can transmit, but I still have the option to process the 190 science that was there before. And the reason why it's set up this way is because the science lab is actually fairly late on the tech tree. So you may have already collected a whole lot of science, especially in around Kerbin's SOI. And this means you can still process that science you've already collected. So not only can you process the science, you can process science that you've already sent to research and development. So let's start off that processing. So all we gotta do is hit the yellow button here. There we go, it is off. But this is not science yet. Let's take a look at our science lab and see what we got happening here. So if we take a look here, we can see that our 38 data is sitting inside our science lab. We can hold up to 750 data in total. And then what we gotta do is we gotta go down here where we'll find a button that says start research. So I push that and we are now in the process or more properly our two scientists that are down there are in the process of converting that into science for us. But you can see that the conversion rate is very, very slow. It's only 0.41 science per day that these folks are generating. And this is based upon the total level of the scientists that you have in the science lab. Now the science lab can hold up to two scientists. By the way, you can put multiple science labs on a vessel or dock them all together and they can process all the same data. So you can speed this up with more labs and more scientists. But right now, my two scientists are both just level zero because I sent them off on this mission. They've not been in other missions before. But they've done stuff. I mean, they've orbited Kerbin, they orbited the sun for a little while on their way here. They're now in Jules SOI. All of that is experience for them. And now it's time to point out a second thing that the lab can do. If we look down here at all the buttons we got, we got a button that says level up crew. Pushing that levels up all the crew. They are now all level two and including our scientists, of course, which is going to jump up the rate at which we can process the data. So there is a really handy thing that the lab can do as well. Now, all of this doesn't come at some sort of a cost. Let's talk a little bit about electricity because it can be a little bit deceptive. If we, let's go into the VAB and take a look at the science lab. Don't forget to right click to open up even more information, but if we scroll down here, we'll see no mention of electricity costs. And that's unfortunate because it costs five units of electric charge per second while the lab is processing data. And that is not insignificant. So you gotta make sure you have that covered. Now, if we go up to electricity here and take a look at solar panels, we do have the aux dash 10 L one by five. That's 8.3 units of electric charge per second. That's that, that'll do it. We have the Gigantors at 24.4 electric charge per second. But these are solar and these numbers are for when you are Kerbin's distance away from the sun. And as you move further or closer, that number is going to change as per the inverse square law. So you gotta be careful if you're way out somewhere like Joule. So for that reason, I went with the PB-NUC RTGs. These will generate a constant 0.8 units of electric charge per second forever, uh, regardless of the situation in which they are in. Now 0.8 doesn't seem like a lot, but they don't weigh much. So I ended up sticking on eight of them. That gives me 6.4 units of electric charge, which covers the science lab and then blinky lights and stuff easily. And before we leave this topic of electricity, we also have to think about transmitting. It's really easy to forget this, whether you have a lab or not. So I have two of the Communicron 88-88 communication antennas. It only ever uses the electric charge of one of them. So the fact that I have two doesn't actually increase the electric charge. But if I go over here and take a look at it in the VAB, notice that a Communistron 8888 uses 200 electric charge per second. Don't even think about covering that with generation. 
it'll it'll be crazy for you to do that. The thing is, is it only uses that while it is transmitting. So the best plan is to figure out how much electric charge that's going to add up to and just put in the appropriate amount of batteries. Right here, it tells us the bandwidth is 20 mits per second. This is by no means obvious, but a MIT is a science point. So that means this will transmit 20 science points per second. The lab holds a maximum of 500 science points. So the most we'll ever transmit is 500. So if you take 500, divide it by 20, that comes out to be 25 seconds of transmission time at most. Multiply that by the 200 electric charge per second that it takes, and that comes out to five units of electric charge. So just make sure you put on enough batteries to cover that five units of electric charge and you'll be fine. I talk about this in quite a bit more detail in my calculating electricity cost video if you want to go check that out. Back here at the Jewel One, well, all we've done so far is a crew report. I got tons of science equipment on this thing, so I'm going to collect all the science that I can. And just like with the crew report, I'm going to transmit everything that I can. Now, you know, with some experiments, you can't transmit all of it. So with those, I collected it all again a second time. And I'm going to take that science data, I'm going to store that into the cockpit. And then that way, uh, I can recover that when we get the Jewel 1 back to Kerbin. That's going to be sometime in the future, but it'll happen eventually. And then I went back and started doing these experiments one more time, this time processing that data into the science lab. And this would probably be a good time for me to mention the third thing that the lab can do. If you take a look at all the buttons down here, there's one that says clean experiments. All that does is resets experiments like the materials bay and the mystery goo. It's nothing that a scientist on EVA can't do themselves. I suppose the purpose of it is that it will do it for you without having to EVA out the scientist. So it's not necessary, but I suppose there are times in which it is convenient. But in the end, after all this is done, we ended up with 661 scientific data out of the maximum 750 that we can hold. And with our two scientists aboard, we're now generating 8.9 science per day. There's actually still more science for me to process, but the problem is, I've run out of room. Any more science that I process will push me over that 750 maximum. So what I need to do is I need to process that science and I need to transmit it. Yeah, when you have gotten that science all processed, it's still not in research and development. You still have to hit the transmit science button in order for you to actually have it. And notice that you can only have a maximum of 500 science. So keep an eye on this. Every once in a while, you're going to have to transmit that away. If you hit the maximum of 500, those scientists just stop working on you. One other thing to realize as well is this processing continues to happen even when the vessel's not rendered. So if you're on another vessel or if you're back at the KSC or whatever, that science is still being generated at that 8.9 science a day. Just don't forget to transmit it. And as these folks continue to close in on Jewel, I want to take this opportunity to welcome aboard my two newest YouTube members, Danilo Gonzalez and Alf Alartor. Thank you very much to my newest members and my most sincerest thanks to all of my YouTube members and Patreon patrons. If you want to join the team, there's a join button down there at the bottom of this video, as well in the description, there is a link to my Patreon page. It definitely is a bit of a fall to Jewel. In fact, I was pretty close to filling up the science lab just during that fall down to Jewel. So I transmitted the science away. And of course that just leaves us with tons more science to continue to process. Our two scientists are going to be busy with Jewel and not only Jewel, but it's five moons, which presents six different SOIs for you to explore. What's more, the entire Jewel system is a gravity assisting, arrow breaking playground that we are going to be taking advantage of. And that's what's going to be the topic of our next episode. So for now, I'm gonna thank you for watching and hope to see you then.